Welcome back guys. I know it's been a very long minute since I've updated you on my Cafe Racer build. Let me try to quickly get you up to speed because it has been so long. We put a Gixxer 750 modern front end. We have a Yamaha R1 shock in the rear. We have verified that this engine does in fact run. I have completely fabricated my own custom design rear subframe. The wheels are freshly painted and I have brand new tires front and rear so what is next this is the most daunting part of this build so far which is why it has taken me so long to release this video my first issue with this gas tank is that when it was originally mounted on the bike the petcock or fuel valve was at the lowest point of the tank but because i am raising the back of the tank up that makes the lowest part of the tank the front part of the tank which the fuel valve or petcock is not there and unless Unless I want to only use about one gallon of gas, I need to move where this fuel valve is located to a lower part of the tank. I knew at this point that the gas tank was going to be a daunting task just because of all the things that I have not figured out at this point of what I wanted to do with the tank. I knew that it was kind of the centerpiece of the build and it needed to be different and cool looking. This part of just moving the fuel valve I thought was kind of an afterthought of I will just knock this out in like a day or two but I was very wrong about that assumption and most of it comes down to the fact that I am not a very skilled welder. You have seen my first projects while welding like anything so I would consider myself a beginner welder at best. So my thinking at this point was just cut out the fuel valve mount from where it was before and then cut a hole for the new location of where I wanted it then use that piece from the new location to patch the old hole from the old location. That sounds very simple in theory, and in theory it was very simple and easy to do, but in reality it was much harder for me to accomplish this. The tank material is thankfully very easy to cut because of how thin it is, but one problem with very thin metal is that it makes it very hard to weld to if you're not a very skilled welder. I tried to cut the holes roughly in the same shape so that my patch material was going to line up, although the gas Gaps are a lot bigger than I would have liked, but I'm going to try my best to weld it all together and hopefully it does not leak. I have practiced on some thinner materials before, but it is definitely a lot harder. And the reason why it is so hard to weld onto thin metal is that the bandwidth between too hot and not hot enough is smaller and smaller the thinner the material goes. So the difference between you welding and nothing melting at all because your amps are set too low, which is great because you're not blowing gigantic holes in the material you're supposed to be fusing together, but then if you have it set a little bit too high, you are definitely blasting gigantic holes in this very thin material that you're trying to fuse together. Let's just say I ran into many, many problems when trying to do this very simple task of taking one part of the tank and moving it to another. So I didn't film most of this and this took me about a month to even get to this point, which I know is crazy, but I ran into a lot of problems. You'll notice that the patch that I used for the hole is completely different because I went with a totally different piece of metal that was larger and easier to weld to. As you can see, I went with a totally different fuel valve because this one was a lot easier to get into the position that I wanted. So I had to patch that gigantic hole with a smaller fuel valve, but in the end, it worked out although it took me a very long time and it looks absolutely terrible. You'll notice that I have a ton of material built up and the reason why I had to do that was because some of the places that I was welding were very hard to get to up against that seam and that's just the nature of the beast so when I had more material to work with I wasn't blowing gigantic holes in the tank anymore so I just kept building stuff up until I had something that was substantial enough and also didn't leak. 
I honestly probably could have made this look a lot cleaner, although one of the caveats of welding a gas tank is you need it to not leak any gas out of it. This took me so long to finish because I figured I was done with all my passes, then I would test it by pressurizing the tank and then spraying it with soapy water and then I would see more air bubbles. So I kept doing that over and over and over again until finally I didn't see any more air bubble. But because I do not want to go back and work on this anymore. I am adding a layer of insurance, which I know is probably super frowned upon, but I don't care. I do not want to spend all of my time working on making this tank look really cool. And then when it's done, put it on the bike and it has a pinhole leak of gas dripping down onto my motor. I'm sure some of you guys have heard the old adage, a grinder and paint makes me the welder I ain't. Well. JB Weld and more JB Weld also makes me the welder I ain't. I am very confident because I put so much filler material onto these welds and I pressure tested them many times so I know it doesn't leak but this is more of just a mental security to reassure myself that I don't have to come back here after I'm already done with the tank because if this thing is all done up and painted and I have a leak it's gonna bother me a lot. You guys are not going to get from this video how much effort I had put into this gas tank thus far and I haven't even really started with all the modifications that I had planned to do with it. This was just the throwaway thing that was supposed to take a day and a half or two days, a weekend at most. Halfway through doing this mod, I thought to myself, you know what, it would actually probably be more enjoyable, faster, and easier to just build my own gas tank at this point. Listen, I know that this looks terrible and you can make fun of me for my welding for doing this and I probably deserve it but you know what I don't care because I am done with this portion of the gas tank and I am so happy to move on. Here are some carbon fiber square tubing as well as some ABS square tubing and I bought these as testers because I had an idea in my head of how I wanted to modify this gas tank. The problem at hand is that this gas tank is extremely rounded. It is basically a teardrop shape. It looks like a dolphin and that's totally great for aerodynamics, but it's not great for my personal design aesthetics because I am not super into curves and rounded corners and the whole Mac aesthetic. Like to me, it just seems like everybody's trying to make things look like a tampon, which is totally fine, but it's just not my jam, at least not now. Maybe later in my life, I will have a greater appreciation for rounded corners. But for now, the things that I'm into are very hard edged. They are angular, they're faceted, and that's just what I like. So my task is to take a very round gas tank and turn it into something extremely flat, or at least giving the appearance that it is flat. I'm trying to turn a dolphin into a Cybertruck, basically. This has been by far the hardest part of this build, and mostly because it is just a monumental amount of choices to make, because I could have just made one flat piece that just made the round tank into something flat, but then you'd essentially just have a box, which it would work, but it's not really the look I'm going for. So I had to segment it and I threw up all of these bars on here, all these tubing pieces, because I didn't know where to segment it and how long the segments had to be, because if they're too long, then they're gonna be coming off of the rounded shape a little bit too far but if they're too short then there's going to be too many segments it's just a lot of things to figure out so first step was just a visual aid and then i did a test print with a 3d printed part because i also wanted some dimensionality i wanted some sort of texture so it wasn't just flat because i could have made this look linear with just painting it with these shapes on there and that would have looked similar to this and it would have been cool and it would have been a lot easier. I eventually came up with this design as the cleanest and also giving me the effect that I wanted. I 
figured that six segments were probably going to be the best and then I added details to all of those segments as well as some mounting holes for some other things which I'll get into later. At this point of the build I was pretty nervous as I wasn't sure how well this was going to translate to a real world thing or what it was going to look like because you can mock stuff up all you want but until you physically have it you really don't exactly know what it's going to look like. I took another step of printing all these pieces out just to make sure the dimensions were correct. Doing this part was very important because you will never get perfect dimensions from a reference photograph because of the parallax of the camera to the subject. That's why I took six individual photos so I could try to get the center point as close as possible. With this paper mock-up I was pretty happy with how things were fitting up and it definitely has that look of cyberpunk slash industrial slash military slash alien technology. It has a bunch of things that are very far away from Dolphin. So 2D mock-up and panels are completed. Now I have a lot of 3D modeling to go and this was the first piece that I made which is just a tester, a cross-section because I'm adding yet another layer of complexity and that is adding LEDs to these panels that I'm making. These are NeoPixel LED strips that are kind of special and more expensive because they're about three or four millimeters less wide than the normal ones that you would buy and I bought them because I want these panels to not be sticking out so far from the gas tank and as you can see I'm going to be adding an acrylic LED edge lit kind of panel on top of the 3D printed panel. So this is uh, definitely getting out of hand here. I designed this lip on the side to come up enough so it occludes the direct light. So you're only seeing the edge lit of the panel and also maybe some ambient lighting from below, but you're not gonna be directly seeing the LEDs themselves, which is always a nicer touch. It took me many iterations of this cross section to try to get all of the dimensions correct so that I have a snug fitting LED strip which I will be gluing as an added precaution although they fit quite tightly in there and I gave a little bit of a gap because not all acrylic panels are exactly the same thickness and so I wanted to err on the side of caution with it being a little bit larger. I also needed a way to mount the acrylic panels to the 3D printed panels which are then mounted to the gas tank. So to do that I am using these standoffs and I wanted to make sure I had the best fit. I will also be gluing these but I didn't want them to just fall out. Another part that I printed was this handle that I was using as a sacrificial means to see how strong of a bond I could get this 3D printed plastic to stick to the gas tank because the last thing I wanted was these panels flying off in the wind. Before finalizing even a 3D printed material to use for the panels I wanted to make sure that I could get it to stick to this tank extremely well because I did not want them to come off. So. I also had a dent in this tank so I decided to kill two birds with one stone and glue it to the dent so that when I'm pulling on it I could be pulling the dent out or hopefully at least trying to. You guys can't really see from the video how much pressure I was putting on that to pull it off but it was a lot of pressure. Here's me holding up the entire gas tank from one tiny little piece of the PLA. To me this was the best combination of the things I tried. I tried Pet G before, I tried JB Weld, but ultimately the tank bond epoxy with the PLA was the best bond that I could come up with. I spent a very long time in Fusion 360 modeling all these side panels out and hopefully I did it correct and now all I have to do is print them out, but I will know if I made a mistake. This is by far the most ambitious 3D printing project I've done so far and it's not even really 3D printed, it just has a lot of 3D printed parts, much like my cargo e-bike build that I am pretty much done with at this point. Here is a teaser of it that no one else has seen yet. 
and I will be uploading the final videos for that very soon, so watch out for that. All these parts took a very long time to print out. Cumulatively, I'm not even sure, probably three or four days, five days total for print time, just alone. Thankfully, all the pieces came out very well. I didn't have any issues or errors. And printing with PLA is a lot easier than printing with PETG, although I am getting better at that as well. I didn't film any of the post-processing for removing all the brims as well as all the support material in the channels, which was quite a pain because it wasn't until the last eight panels that I adjusted my support material enough to be easily removed. And now that I know the right settings, it's a lot easier to remove support material. At this point, I'm not quite ready to start mounting these panels to the tank because I want to be able to paint underneath the panels first to give them something a little bit better to stick to, as well as there are multiple issues with this tank that I want to address before I start making all the panels permanently stuck to it. It has one pretty big dent that I was pulling and I actually got quite a bit of it out, but I did want to make that as smooth as I possibly could. It also has these badge mounts on the sides which are pretty deep recessed into the tank that I needed to fill up. So basically all of the tedious tasks that I really didn't want to do but are very necessary in order to go to the next steps. And another one of those things was adding some tabs to the bottom of the tank. Because I'm going to be adding even more 3D printed parts below, hanging from the bottom of the tank to kind of conceal that rounded edge of the tank, I wanted to make that more angular, but I didn't want to trust all of that being on just some adhesive, even though it probably would be fine that adhesive is extremely crazy and sticks very strong. I just figured if there's not gonna be a lot of material for me to be able to glue to, and also these are gonna be hanging down where your legs might be hitting them, and also the heat from the motor is gonna be coming up. I just wanted them to be a little more secure. I almost cut all these off without taking off the paint which would have been a lot harder because it's easier when it's all just one piece to just blast off all the old paint. This was a panel that I had cut out from one of my old e-bikes. I'm not sure if you guys remember that but I always keep a lot of scrap metal because you never know when you'll need to make a bunch of tiny little tabs and this was hard to figure out how to just hold this in the vise enough for me to blast them all out of there. You can see I'm stripping off the paint to where I'm going to be welding these tabs on. Yes, I know I'm welding more on this gas tank, but this area is not as daunting as the thinner parts which are in the middle of the tank, so I'm not too worried about that. The other thing is I filled the dent as well as the recesses for the badge attachments with more of that epoxy tank bond and it actually sands pretty good but I will have to go either with another pass or I do want to try adding some bondo because I've never worked with it before and I think that that's primarily what it's used for is filling up little holes and gaps like this. My solution for dealing with this dent was basically Basically just pulling it out as much as I possibly could and then the amount that I couldn't I was just going to fill it up with more material and then sand it back down smooth and even though yes there is a minor dent in the tank you're not really going to be able to see it once I fill it up and make it smooth again. Now I have never worked with Bondo before. I have seen a bunch of people use it and it seems like a nice material to use for purposes such as this. I don't do a lot of body work for my projects. There's not a lot of things that I need Bondo for and I don't even really need it for this project because the things I'm trying to hide are going to be behind panels and I'm also going to potentially be patterning or doing some sort of camouflage type scheme on the gas tank. So that is going to hide a lot of imperfections. But one thing I did realize is that I don't know how to use Bondo. This is all in one take. So you're seeing me mix it right here. And this is a total elapsed time of probably about 20 to 30 seconds max, maybe. It's not that long. And you'll see what happens when 
I try to put it onto the part that I need to put it onto. I didn't, there's no cut, so you just saw me mix it, and yeah, it turned into a very hardening paste extremely quickly. Like, way too fast to be able to use this product. That can of Bondo was very old, it was my dad's, and I just chalked that up to maybe it's just an old product that isn't working right, because I did follow the directions to a T, and I had never used it before. My dad said that it hardens very quickly, so you gotta work fast, and I was like, okay, well, this is like way too fast. So here I am just using JB Weld where I would be using Bondo. I ultimately later did get a new can of Bondo, same exact problem. But I did eventually figure out what the problem was. As you can see, I filled in the badges and I welded on the bottom tabs to the tank, as well as filling in the dent on the other side, as well as the badge on the other side. That is all pretty much Bondo and it is sanded as smooth as I can get it. So as I'm priming out the tank, I'll explain to you why I was having issues with the Bondo and that is because the instructions call for you to put way more hardener than you use. I get that most of the time you're just going to be filling a tiny little spot. You want it to dry and harden very quickly so that you can just keep on working and you're not waiting around for your Bondo to harden. And I was under the impression that the hardener was part of the mixture that makes the Bondo hard, but that's not actually true. The hardener is more of an accelerator than it is a hardener. I guess technically it makes it harder faster, but it's not actually the thing that makes it harder. So if you need more time with your Bondo setting up, all you have to do is put less hardener. You actually don't need any hardener and it will harden as much as it would if you added a whole bunch of hardener. It just would take a lot longer to do it. Once I understood that, the Bondo worked fine and it is something that works very nice. My only complaint is that it is extremely expensive. Another daunting task as I'm arranging these panels is that not only do I need to align them correctly on one side, I then need to replicate that the same and mirror it on the other side. Thankfully, I figured out that using packing tape and doubling it over so that it was sticky on both sides allowed me to quickly and easily rearrange and move all the panels without having a bunch of tape like affecting the other panels. It was a very clean way to also visualize where everything was gonna sit. Once I decided upon a final resting place for these panels, I quickly outlined them in pencil just in case they fell off or the tape didn't want to stick anymore. I didn't want to lose these very critical positions. Now I know this gas tank is not finished yet and I hope that this video illustrates kind of why there was such a large gap in time between the last episode because a lot of effort went into just getting it to this point at least and I did take on quite a few other projects while I was concurrently working on this one. I got kind of bogged down with this portion of the build because it's kind of daunting a bit to try and make this come into a reality. I am going to be dedicating so much more time directly to this build with no more interruptions, so hopefully the updates are going to be coming a lot faster. I am happy with the progress so far. I think it's actually going to work. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.